All right, so I'm going to go ahead and call this uh, meeting to order. It is 4.03 p.m. And uh, glad to see everybody here. Should be a pretty short meeting. So that's always a good thing. And uh, I guess we'll go ahead and get started on three, or I'm sorry, public comments. Any public comments? We do not. We have no public comments tonight. No public comments. That's a good thing. And now we'll move on to uh, three on our agenda and projects to consider. Uh, Mike Morgan. Yeah, and I'm going to kind of give an update, and it's a little different update than the one we normally get, which is kind of the kind of the status of our capital projects. Is, is that is that is the scope of that work winds down, and we do still have a few things going on off that list, but we have some other things that have that have kind of popped up, and uh, just making sure you guys are abreast of what's going on, kind of what to expect, and kind of what's next on our radar. So uh, as we as we talked in detail at our last meeting. Um, our facilities assessment is got kicked off, so we've had a we had a, kick, a kickoff meeting, a plan, a couple of planning meetings, kind of some get to know you stuff with our with the staff that's going to be. And the, the first crews were actually in the district today, and so uh, the way the process is going to work, uh, we're going to do a pilot campus, uh, which is going to be built in middle school, and so they will come back to us um, with kind of the layout, the data. Uh, as much as they can do at this point assessment wise and index wise and then we kind of go through that together as a team and we we kind we tweak it the way we want it they, they give us some ideas and we kind of get a glimpse into what a final product may look like or could look like and then they, they kind of spread out and do the greater work throughout all of our other facilities as well so we're really excited they're going to be uh, like I said they had a crew of about seven or eight on the, in the district today and uh, that work's going to be uh, pretty intense over the next two and a half months or so. And then they, they'll enter kind of their uh, the phase where they're, they're creating the dashboard, creating the reports. We get to meet with them several times and, and scrub the data to make sure that, that, it's, that, that we're getting exactly the information that we feel like we're going to need as a district to, to move forward at the conclusion of the project. So that's, it. that's really exciting. I, we're anxious to see the first, the first parts of it come in and, and so we can see where we're at. Miller Heights, um, we, we uh, about probably about five weeks ago, we made a decision to do some safety enhancements at Miller Heights, and that's it, primarily going to include uh, new fencing and new lighting. We need to really light that. that that's a, uh, at night, that's a dark campus. It, it's not well lit. So um, we've had um, the fencing project is, is going to commence quickly. Uh, we, we're going to put new fencing around the entire campus. Uh, some of the fencing on the back side will be eight foot fencing. Some of the fencing on the sides and front will be six foot fencing. They will all have push bar uh, doors that can, you know, where you can you can leave the playground area or leave the fenced area, but you, it'll be locked from the outside to come in. And then uh, we're in the process of taking Doug Taylor's lighting evaluation from last year, bringing a couple of vendors out, get some ideas, and we're going to try to get some lighting up uh, in the next month or so as well there. So that, that's, uh, we, we talked to Hope about it. Hope's really excited. We think it's not only going to going to dress up the campus a little bit, but it's going to make it a, do some, some safety measures uh, as part of a, a continuation of the fencing projects that we've been undergoing the last year or so. Um, we're, we're in th phase three of our cameras, and it is the final phase of our of our security camera projects. And so this is, we've taken care of all the campuses uh, with either new cameras, camera repairs, or reconfiguring old cameras. And now we're moving on to our transportation department, our support services, and our administration building. So we're gonna do a few upgrades, not, not to the same extent that we did on the campuses, but there are some areas of transportation, especially we, that, that, that facility, the, the lot has grown and we need some, we need some cameras over there and we need some work here as well. So. I have a question regarding cameras. I think it was last year at some point, one of my daughter's friend's car was parked in that south parking lot back behind the scoreboard. Mm -hmm. We have you know, a lot of kids park out there and something happened to one of their vehicles, but there wasn't any footage. Do we have a camera or we thought about putting more a well, out there that, that's a challenge, that. and lighting's a challenge there too, because it is it is a that you talk about having the infrastructure there as far as cabling and networks and things like that. There's you know we have a press box on uh, a camera on the press box that kind of sees that whole stadium view, 
But uh, that's a that's a great point that we need to, and we put some on the back side of the the. Um, Back behind the baseball field and behind the visitors bleachers, we have a lot of student parking there and we were able to tie some of those cameras <coughs> into the networks. But that's a great point. I'll, I'll do some research on that and bring back a report. Is that a, it, it's out in the parking lot away from like the side of the building. Am I right on that? Yeah, it's, it, it's we, out there where the band practices. Yeah. 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 And and was I, it at night? That situation? No, it was during school. It was during school. Yeah, that they just something got damaged or broken into and there wasn't any footage to go to. Yeah. yeah. I just didn't know with the, you know, the scoreboard being there, if we could tie it into the scoreboard somehow, uh, at least there's electricity there. We can always look at one of the things that is the hardest is the, the quality of the camera on the outside and the lighting, like I said, the lighting for night events and stuff. Yeah. Um, what we find is you need a really high quality camera for the parking lot situations like that, especially if it's going at a distance. But we, it's something we can definitely explore and see what kind of, yeah. And, and with the number of cameras we have too, sometimes we have to really um, get into that level of detail on when the cameras should be on as yeah. well. So when you have this many cameras and you're talking about memory space and storage and, and, and bandwidth and all those things, not every camera runs 24 hours a day. So it's kind of something like that. We would have to be, you know, not only would we need it, we would have to have it lit where the camera would do its job and then make sure it's on and recording at the times, whatever might be high risk times, you know, for things like that to occur. So uh, we'll definitely look into that and, and get the information back. Um, so um, lighting assessment, like I say, uh, Miller Heights is one of our priorities. We're also going back to identify uh, another round, uh, there's, some, there's some parking lots around this building that need to be lit up a little better. There's some parking lots uh, around the stadium, uh, the little side parking lot between Sparta and the stadium or just we had a conversation this morning about. So that one of our next priorities is to, to identify which parking lots didn't get uh, attention to detail at the last round of lighting assessment. And uh, just making sure that the lights that we have are all working I mean, pro properly. That's, a, that's just kind of an evaluation thing. We may have the uh, great lights, but if bulbs are burned out or power is turned off or a bird built a nest in it or whatever, we just have to stay on top of those things. Make sure that our lighting is, is there. Uh, one thing at grounds, if you've ever noticed, uh, there's a, we share a fence between our grounds, our grounds department and Sparta. And it's an, it's an old wooden privacy fence, and it's, it's not in the best of shape. So we, we are, uh, did get a quote, and we're going to replace that old wooden privacy fence with a metal fence. And we're going to extend that around on the, the, the south side of the building where we can pull those grounds vehicles and trailers through that, through that area behind the building and just pull out the front. It's going to make it a, a lot more attractive. It's going to make it a lot more efficient and give them a little more storage room uh, back there. Uh, playgrounds, uh, our incredible playground project is rolling along. Uh, if you've seen it, all of the concrete's poured, a lot of the playground equipment has been installed. Uh, what hasn't been installed will be installed within the next week or so. Um, the canopies, the 30 by 30 canopies are starting to be raised. And uh, the last stage they will come in and install the fall protection, so that, which is going to be really cool. So uh, we're still expecting a mid-November completion on that, barring uh, 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 poor weather, lots of rain would be the only thing that would really set us back at this point. The way that it worked out and the way that we, what we had in our base project and what, with us accepting alternate four, um, the way it all played out, we're going to end up with three additional 30 by 30 canopies. Uh, when, we, when every campus is basically going to have two 30 by 30 canopies over play areas, uh, with the exception of Beck's. Beck's uh, most of Beck's playgrounds are situated in amongst shade trees already, and it, it kind of defeated the purpose of a shade canopy if you have to cut down trees to put the canopy up. So we're going to have three canopies left. Uh, I would ask that you guys kind of think about that. We're going to try to get input from principals and directors and see if there might be some areas where equitably we could put those up. So, um, you know, this might be an instance for... Uh, we could, you know, send one to each tennis complex, or it could be something where a campus has a need for maybe some shaded area for outside dining or something like that. So we feel like our playgrounds are going to be in great shape, but the way that it all the way that it all worked out, we were going to end up with three additional canopies that we could use within the district somewhere. So that's that's going to be kind of fun to to figure out where we can utilize those the best and. 
who, who are we can affect the most students with uh, with that. So, um, DAP, we've got a project going over there. Uh, we, we just finished putting a camera and a, and, a, and a buzz in and buzz out on their front door. So that was something that uh, with that area, we didn't, the way it's set up, a security vestibule wasn't the best option, but having an outdoor camera and a buzz on the, on the, the interior door was, was the way that, that worked out well for that. Also, we're going to, when we get caught up and when we have some time when students are out of the building, uh, we anticipate getting that, that counselor's office put in for them over there as well. That's been one that, that we've talked to Sandy about. And this summer, we were finishing up some, a lot of the other projects, but we will. that's going to be one we'll get done. Um, and then we've also got one that we've talked about in this committee before is at the, the BHS dance studio, making sure that that's marked up the way that, that Ms. Hill and and her assistant would like it so that we can best utilize that space to have them ready for, for performances and competitions as well. Now, what is the timeline on the DAP and the dance thing? I, I think DAP, I'm thinking probably over Christmas break. If we, I mean, that's kind of what David and I have talked about. I mean, sooner if we can, but it's, it's the and December I'm timeline. Well, we can probably get a good start on it. Mm -hmm. just, just due to the employees being off. Yeah. Um, and then we do anticipate uh, the orchestra. The last parts for the orchestra edition were supposed to be in and installed today. So we fully anticipate being able to do our, our closeout at our next board meeting on the orchestra. And the only thing lacking at Lake Belton High School at this point is uh, some lights, uh, installation of some of the lights and configuration in the, in the Performing Arts Center and in the Black Box Theater. And so as soon as those are installed, and we can get them to come back in and train our staff, then we'll be ready for a closeout at Lake Belton High School. So we're fully anticipating to be able to do that at the next board meeting as well. So exciting things to, to close out those two projects hopefully within the next couple of weeks. Yep. It, David, anything else that's just kind of looming? I, I kind of got off script of the capital projects and wanted to kind of, you know, no. some of the things that have come up this fall. I don't know of anything. I will mention that. Uh, <clears throat> So I was contacted by a uh, real estate agent uh, who owns several lots over behind Chisholm Trail that border up against that chain, existing chain link fence that was installed during the construction in 2014. Well, apparently uh, that particular lot she sold, the surveyors came out, which happened to be the same surveyors that the district uses. Uh, so our fence is encroaching on her property about six inches. <laughs> so uh, when the fence guys here doing little hikes, we're gonna get them to relocate. Yeah. <laughs> Just in case anybody asks. Yeah. Why we're moving the fence six yeah. inches? <laughs> yeah, why are you moving this fence six inches? Unfortunately, it's on the wrong side. So it's, on the right. it's on their side six yeah. inches, and not our side six inches. Yeah. So. And speaking of the ground, you said something earlier. How are we doing now with the combo of the heart of Texas with the? elementary campuses in our yeah in our that's, a, that's a great question it's, with that? it's working well um the contract that had been negotiated with dr muller and 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 uh, heart of texas when it goes through the end of december so we've we've been talking with them about options uh keith cook our new executive director of operations he's working on some scenarios um, about six different scenarios and uh, we're going to be talking with our hr staff in the next three weeks and we, we really want to have by the by the end of the first week in November a recommendation so that we can be fair to Heart of Texas, we can be fair to any other vendors that are interested. And you know the options range from coming back completely in house, uh, what it would take to do that and do it right and feel good about it, all the way to continuing to outsource some of the work. And so we've looked at several different different scenarios and. Uh, uh, gonna gonna really sit down and take a hard look at it, look at the, the bottom line numbers wise and, and financially and see which one is in the best interest of the district while also making sure our our campuses have great curb appeal and then we're able to keep up with the demand for for you know keeping our campuses tripped out and loaded out. I don't know there was what probably three weeks ago when we did the JRTC. Yep. Yeah. That the, that part of the high school, that grass was. Mm -hmm. yeah. That rain, that you know, we had that couple of weeks of rain, and yeah. it, it set us back a little bit. And yeah. that was one that, that was a miss. That, that should have been done before that ceremony. So we 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 corrected that. But, yeah. um, I think that's a good point too. A little bit of what we're working through is the cadence between 
um, when they come in, when our guys are doing some of the work, and when we have public events. And so just trying to make sure that we're all on the same page on that one. Yeah. Mike's been doing a good job trying to coordinate that. But we've uh, talked numerous times about the majority of our community has a perception of our facilities by the outside of our buildings, not the inside. Most people drive by and are not always in the buildings. So we have to do both. We've got to keep the, out, the exterior up and the landscaping up and that curb appeal that Mike said, but also the interior facilities. And, and we've had some greater discussions too and kind of changing, maybe, maybe wanting to change our way of thinking because it, a lot of it is mowing and weed eating and, and trimming and, and those types of things, but there's also a component of irrigation that goes along with that and, and having an irrigation plan and strategy that, that's sustainable. But, uh, you know, when you talk about having 19 campuses, and most have some or a lot of irrigation is making sure that that, that irrigation is working properly it's watering what it should water and you're not having waste and um, you know and then also uh, uh, spray strategy as well so those are some things that keith and david and i are kind of working through and as we have those discussions with hr and others is, is how can we best be most efficient be most cost effective but also make sure that those things are handled as well so those are i mean it's a it's, a, it's kind of a big picture um scenarios that we want to go through and we just want to come up with the best options for the district and then have we moved into the sixth street facility yet some staff have moved into the sixth street we're in the middle of phases on that one but they're yeah. they're in the middle of getting stuff over melinda might have more info than I think some of the special education staff has already moved in. Okay. Good. We did use that facility for our technology call center at the beginning of the school year when we hired additional employees to help support us through that. Uh, and so they were all housed over there. We had kind of like a war room going on with <laughs> technology. Yeah. It worked out actually pretty well for us. Mike, did you want to uh, talk to them at all about Spoon Center? Uh, yes, I certainly do. Um, so. We know that in, in, as, we, as we engage over the next year or so in long range planning, we know that, uh, you know, we know, we, we, we've talked about Swim Center in the, in the overall board meeting and we've talked about it in the facilities committee. Uh, a, a, an immediate need though, in lieu of long term planning is we have some rips in the outer membrane on, uh, on the south side of that building. And uh, we, we, we used a strategy um, during 2019 to patch some of those rips and you know it was we knew that it might not be the long-term solution but we thought it might be immediate but the, the patches haven't held and there's some additional uh, deterioration from UV on that on that so we're in the process right now of having an, uh, uh, an architect look at that facility give us an assessment of, of repli and a replacement of the outer membrane we know there are some companies that do that, and um, we're going to anticipate going out, uh, hopefully in the next couple of weeks with an RFP, to what would it cost to replace the outer membrane on that facility. And uh, it, number one is it would solve our, 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 our leak problem, which with uh, the tears in the outer membrane, when we do get heavy rains, we do have some water that comes in and gets in between the two membranes. And uh, it would also kind of give us bias some time as we plan long term what to do with those programs. Um, but what we don't want is in the short term, while we're doing long term planning, to get in a situation where the inner membrane fails, where we get mold in the facility or something along those lines. So that, that would be worst case scenario is, is during, while we're deciding what to do long term, we have to close down short term because of a problem that would come because of rips in the outer membrane. So uh, I fully anticipate um, if everything goes according to plan, we hope to have a, an RFP recommendation back to you in the November board meeting where to tell us what our best option is to repair that outer membrane. Uh, worst case scenario would be we would bring it to the December meeting if, if we can't get it done in the time frame before November. And it would be interesting, obviously, to see what the cost would be on it, but then to see what the downtime would be. Because do, the, do we ever take off from people being in the pool? Is there ever a point in the year where there's just a, op an opening? Not with the club. There's about, you know, certain holidays where we're shut down, but, but the club pretty much goes year round. Yeah, so that'll be an yeah. interesting logistical. Because I just never knew. But honestly, other than our football facility, there really isn't another facility that we have athletically that takes care of as many people. 
and it bothers me as a, a being part of this whole deal to be turning people away from programs because we don't have the facilities because I know how important it is for my kids to be involved in something and if that's swimming and then we talked about down the road to put in a, a state-of-the-art facility that could bring in revenue of having big meets literally two to four I mean literally almost every weekend of the year so that's something cool to think about down the yes. road but now can we spend that 840 something thousand is this something that could come out of those funds that we had left over from our three and a half million yes so that yes. could be something we could use that money for because I just I think about that money all the time well, we, well, we go get this money go. <laughs> we know <laughs> go on, let's go let's spend some money <laughs> so here's what I'll say, and I think Mike has said it well, it's a, it's a real balance. So when we got the rain, I'm, probably a lot of us in this room drove over there. I was over that, that day, I think Mike was over there, I know Sam's been over there, I know Melinda's been over there, and David's obviously over there a lot. And what you see is you got a big water bubble basically hanging there, mm. but then what the other thing that you see is you got water dripping down the walls. And we also have electricity and fire alarms and things in the walls. So unfortunately, we feel like we have to explore some kind of short-term repair option, although it's gonna be a big dollar amount. And that's, this, that's the challenge that we have with that facility is over the next few years, that facility might require more and more and more money of ours. And uh, I think this facility's assessment is gonna give us that opportunity to, to really ask the question, what do we wanna do long-term? And is it investing dollars in that faci facility continually, or is it building something new, like you mentioned? And I think that, unfortunately, we've got to make the, uh, probably the tough call to make some repairs. They're going to be a little costly right now, but I think there are going to be more coming down the road. That facility needs a lot of work. Still, so. Well, I mean, we're already, from a capacity standpoint, we're maxed. We are. So I think that kind of... You don't need the assessment to say we're turning kids away. We don't. Right. Yes. So, what can we patch it to get us to, you know, if, if in two years we put together some type of a plan yeah. and we get it approved, then it goes to bid, then we got to build it. We're four years away. Yeah. We are. So, what? Which is why I'm making sure that we have a functional roof right now absolutely. to sustain all those programs becomes, becomes more critical no doubt. probably yes. than it would have otherwise. No doubt. And, and keep in mind on that membrane, so you got an inner liner and an outer liner. Mm -hmm. So to replace the outer liner, which is what we're planning on doing, you don't have to shut the swim center down during oh, that, okay. that repair. Good. So didn't realize that. Yeah. Okay. You can stay up in operation. Okay. And, and the problem, the problem with the outer membrane has been just time. I mean, it's a it's it's a 16 year old or 15 year old facility. And there's been a lot of UV on that outer membrane over the last 15 years. What is so, it? What is it? Made of what is this? is this canvas? What is it? It's a PVC type product, yeah. but it's uh, you can't even buy it anymore. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure you you all heard all the stories years ago about uh, that facility. The same the Dallas Cowboys, you know, got their big losses. Comes out of business, so about to kill their special teams coach when it all came down. Yeah. Yeah. But there are companies that are, I mean, there's still lots of these around. Yeah. And so there are uh, some companies that, that do specialize in coming back in and refurbishing and uh, doing repairs and things. So we're... Well, it seems like you, you're on the timeline. But I just think that's something that needs to be taken care of as soon as possible. I, I don't know why, but I think about our swim deal all the time. Well, in Lake Belton, uh, if right. you saw, I mean, they won their first meet that they've they ever had right. in the history of the school the other they're day, which is exciting. Too. Yeah, it's good. It's great. Yeah. Thank you, Mike. Thank, Thank you. Mike. All right. So we're, uh, we'll go back to 3A, our Lake Belton High School Construction Auditor Final Report. Yay. So, Lord, we uh, want to thank you for, at the beginning of this whole process, as Debbie's coming up, um, you all contracted with Debbie, and uh, thanks to leadership from Susan and Angela. Come on up, Debbie, you can have a seat. Um, it, thanks to leadership and all of that, she's been involved from the beginning with all of this project. That is a super smart move. And... Um, learning about her involvement and what's been done over the construction projects, I think you're all going to be very happy to hear results from that. So thank you for your leadership and also previous administrators and all this. I think it's paid off for us. Well, I, I wish we could take any credit at all. Dad and I both got elected when this bond election got passed, so we didn't have anything to do with that. But I do remember there was some, a time where 
we did have an auditor involved in some construction projects, and it got us in a bind from a business standpoint. I, so I think that they learned from that lesson, and this is only the best way to move forward, having an outside eyes looking at things. So absolutely, absolutely yeah, I agree with that. All right, and I'm sorry, I'm Ty. And I'm Janet. We're on Debbie. All right, Debbie. Let's go. Take it away, so, Debbie. Yeah, thank you for those nice words. I am sorry I'm late. Um, I was meeting with a contractor in Waco. I should know better than to believe them when it said they said it took 20 minutes to get here. Uh, <laughs> in an airplane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I have to look at their books a little closer. <laughs> anyway, um, so the handout that I have here is pretty simple. Um, it's three pieces. The, the, the top piece is um, the GMP as of um, September. And the GMP, the, the, um, or the billing as of September of 20th, they just sent out a new um, updated billing last night late, but I, I didn't have time to update this. But I think it's probably pretty close. So the, the top line on here is GMP, 106 million. Build as of 9:30 is um, 104,598,192, and unbuild 1.8 million, and that should stay. You, you know, it'll go down a little bit, but um, that should be pretty close. So that's what you have in city. So that's the good news. Um, this this job, um, I, I think, was remarkable. Uh, from the standpoint that they actually finish the bulk of the work early. I, I very seldom see that. So, um, you know, Barley did a really good job, I guess, managing the schedule and, and getting it done on time. So that was really good. Uh, the second um, uh, chart in here is on the self-performed work. And so this was the piece that was has been probably the most controversial part of the entire audit. And um, in the beginning, and I'll just go back, um, your contract says that all self-performed work is supposed to be done on a cost plus a fee basis. And so uh, when they started the project, uh, they didn't really want to do that. They wanted to do lump sum, which would be just be, you know, our total package is $4 million. We want to charge you $4 million and no backup, you know, receipts or anything. And um, the, uh, you know, prior superintendent and Angela really uh, dug in and said, no, we're going to go with the contract. And um, they did that. And um, what happened as a result of that is they only, so the amount that they <coughs> wanted to bill, 4.2 million. And what they ended up billing you as of September 30th was 3.2 million. So it was practically a million dollars of savings that if they had charged that lump sum like they wanted to do, you wouldn't have seen that. So this is like a big, you know, um, win I think for for your organization, your, your school. So this 950 is a part of the 1.8 million. That's not in addition. So um, anyway, that is um, what we call avoided cost. So that was cost that you didn't have to pay. Um, and if you have questions, just stop me. So the next chart is really the audit. And it, it, I, I sort of summarized some of the areas, but I have the 10 areas where we recovered um, money. And these are, these are areas where they charged something and we disputed the charge and talked to them. And really, um, Jennifer, Dr. Muller, um, and they, we'd have these conversations, and finally they would, you know, agree to settle on a, a, a credit. So um, I'll go through these, and if you have any questions, just let me know. So the first one is labor and labor burden. So this is one of the areas in a construction audit where there's always a lot of profit in the labor burden. Um, they typically like to charge as much as they can, and then if you don't audit it, you know, that's just an excess profit. So these um, overcharges are usually fairly significant. Um, in this case, this is for their salary and hourly, and they had originally wanted to charge over 40%, and 
and um, they finally agreed to 30 percent. And so that's what that $200,000 is for. And we asked them to substantiate their labor burden, and they couldn't. And so they, that's why they agreed to something less. So Debbie, in this whole audit process, part of your role, or part of an auditor's role in any of this is to question those billings, or to question what is being billed, and then to be able to come to some negotiation by, you know what's based on current market value or current uh, market trends in the construction industry, what should be billed? Is that, am I saying that right? That's right, okay. that's exactly right. We, um, you know, we've done enough of this over the years yeah. that we have a pretty good idea what labor burden, I mean, we know what taxes <coughs> are, payroll taxes, and then health, health care is usually a certain range. Um, you've got 401k, which is, you know, pretty well um, set. And then, you know, workers' comp and a few other things. But I mean, they're, they're not big surprise items. So you add those up and, you know, really what it should be. So um, the next item is the bond. So, and it's really important in your contract to have language that says, you will pay actual cost of the bond and not a percentage. Because contractors generally like to put a percent, like 1% in the contract for bond, and generally their bonds cost about half of that, 0.5, 0.6%. And so um, anyway, the, this language was in your contract, and um, as you can see, $183,000 is sort of what we've talked about. This is still pending, the final numbers. But that, that was the amount that was given by Bartlett at one point that they thought the credit would be. So that is just, if it, it's just like <clears throat> one sentence in your contract makes a difference. So that's very critical. Um, the next one, Textura. So Textura is a third party software and it actually, um, basically the subcontractors run their pay apps through Textura, um, and it, it goes through and does some magic that says everything looks good, and then Bartlett will pay based on this Textura information. And um, I'm oversimplifying it, but um, a lot of contractors use it. It's, it's a reputable product. The problem is um, it's, we don't really consider that a, an actual direct cost to your construction project. So we see that as more of an overhead, you know, like a accounting function for them. So this was a debate that started at the very beginning of the project and basically went throughout the whole time. And finally we agreed to split the, you know, split it. It was $25,000 charge and they agreed to give up half of it. So um, it, it's, it's controversial. Some owners allow it, some don't. Um, we always take that, that it's, overhead and try to kick it out, but it doesn't always work. So um, the next item is, and their self-performed work, um, they have a lot of items, you know, like equipment, you know, grading, um, cleanup, uh, protection of um, the different trades, the, the work that was done. Um, line and grade, you know, getting control points for the different areas. Um, however, th and that was fine, but in addition to that, they had um, uh, costs in there to manage this whole thing. There was one person charged to this full time just to manage it, and I've never seen that before. I mean, it's really not necessary to have somebody like that. And that's in addition to they had supervision. So they had a couple of assistant superintendents overseeing all the labor and all the activities. So we challenged that and they agreed to not remove the, the guy, but to move him to general conditions. So what you saved on that was a 15% fee. But um, that was, you know, to have a, 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 an administrator in addition to 15% just seemed exorbitant. And so, um, and I think everybody agreed with that. So, um, unfortunately, the contract didn't define what the 15% was to cover. I guess if we were going to go back, if we had known this, we probably would have more definition in there. Um, 
The next item, BIM, they had um, some costs in there that just looked odd. Um, like they would charge the same amount every week over and over. And, and that's not usually how BIM works. So what we challenge. BIM? What is BIM? Oh, it's um, the um, information modeling. So that's computer guys that go through and uh, review, you know, they review the plans and look for conflicts in the plan um, and identify those so you can get them fixed. So it stands for building image modeling. Yeah. So 3D mm -hmm. image of cuts, cuts to the building. Yeah, and usually they they they're busy in the in the front end of the project, and then like change order work and that sort of thing. But this person would charge just like four hours, four hours, four hours, four hours every week, and it looked odd. So we just challenged it, and they go, "Yeah, that really, you know, they, they didn't even. I, I think it was he was working on something else, so they just took it out of the project completely. Not a lot of money, but um, definitely a cost you didn't need to pay for." Okay, so the next item was interesting as well. So in their self-performed work, they had these assistant superintendents. And not only were they have laborers doing cleanup and um, grading and that sort of thing, but the assistant superintendents were also doing that work. Well, they make a lot more money than an hourly person. And so we said, well, you know, if they're doing the same work, you should only you know, Belton should only have to pay the same amount of money that they pay for a laborer. So um, this was also a big discussion because obviously they had incurred a cost for their superintendent, assistant superintendent to do the work. But they did give a, a credit back $10 an hour um, so for the time they were um, doing those projects. So that, that was uh, an interesting one. Um, <clears throat> The next one, so they have their own equipment that they rent to the job. And there was, the, w the way the contract reads, it's supposed to be um, billed up to a certain amount and then it is supposed to stop. And so we questioned the actual fair market value of the equipment that was on site. And they never really gave us that information, but they did give a big credit. So obviously they had overcharged for equipment. So um, they also, and within that, they'd also charged for uh, repairs of the equipment and then training to teach people how to run the equipment. And they, um, they thought that was a valid expense, but I mean, your contract says they're supposed to come to the job trained. So I don't know why you would pay to train them to do the equipment. So that was an issue. <laughs> the next item, the fee on subcontractors. So in several areas, they would hire subcontractors to do some of this work. And so we challenged that and said, well, you're not even self-performing the work, you're hiring these people. And it didn't seem like a fee of 15% was appropriate. So they did agree to adjust their fee on the different vendors, some 5%, some 7.5%. So the adjustment they get back $53,000 in fee. And then um, small tools. So during the job, they buy tools. And if there's tools left at the end of the job, they're supposed to either give you the tools, which usually nobody wants um, those tools, or they're supposed to give you a credit for the fair market value. And so we went through the tools and agreed on a, I think David was involved in um, agreeing on a price for um, the credit for those tools. And then um, the last one is subcontract change orders. So one of the things that we do is on all the subcontracts, when the subcontractors submit their change orders, we review them for appropriate pricing. So you've got your architect and they look at scope and um, you know the owners usually look at scope and what's being done. And our, our main area is to look at pricing. So we challenged the number of the prices being charged for labor. And then we, we had um, certified payroll so we could validate what was, you know, what they were getting paid versus what they were charging. So we had a number of issues on several subcontractors. 
and we were able to recover $156,000 for those subcontracts on the change orders. So the whole thing, $787,000, that is actually everything other than the bond has already been credited to your, your project. So it's money in the bank. Good deal. Well, I will have to say I've been sitting. That's awesome. I've been sitting here uh, for 15 minutes, feeling a lot of conflict inside because I've been a subcontractor for 15 years. I own a floor business, so the school board member in me is like, "Whoopee, we got a yeah. quarters of a million. and the subcontractor's like, "Really? You're doing this to these people?" <laughs> so, so, but good job because this is why I don't do commercial work. So, uh, this is a uh, really good on on you guys' part. Well, I didn't realize that some of this stuff happened. You know, when I bid things, I bid things on the scope of work uh, based on market value, competing against other bids and things like that. But when I give you a bid, unless you change what we're going to do, we stick to the bid. And there's some times where I have to come out of pocket because of mistakes that I've made that I don't get to bill you for. But I didn't know this is kind of how it worked on these big projects after the fact. That's it. That's interesting. Well, and I will tell you, you probably did, you know, price on a lot of stuff. And a lot of this is just labor rates. Mm -hmm. And, um, and we had, I mean, I will not tell you, we didn't just take the money from the subs. There were a lot of um, conversations, and some of them were several conversations with the, you know, subcontractors. So it's well, not... I know going into this project, I, it was, you were still at AD, maybe even coaching, but Dr. Muller did a, a very extensive research. Remember that chart that they gave us on the hourly of all the different trades when we were moving into this project? And it was really comprehensive. They they did a good job on figuring out how much each trade should make, you know, hourly, different things, stuff like that. So I know we going into this, we had a kind of an idea, but mm -hmm. but that's why that's why we hired you. So wow, that's great. Thank you for your work. I, I appreciate it. it. The eye opener for me is you know they're so Mark and Cock have done great work in our school. We're proud of that school mm -hmm. and everything. The, the challenge is, is sometimes they want to make changes to contracts or they want to do it just a little bit different, but it comes at a cost. And so the idea of having an auditor be there to guide and ask the right question through that process, I think really protects the money of the taxpayers mm -hmm. and uh, builds that trust with our community. So I'm, I'm very thankful for, um, as you all said, former board members, former uh, superintendent and, and um, current CFO, Robert Buller. And, uh, their work in trying to make sure we're protecting taxpayer dollars and all of this because our facility turned out wonderful and we saved some money and I think that's great. It, yeah, and I'll just say that it this went, Bartlett, they were very easy to work with and I think they did do a really good job and but it, it really was, uh, the big difference is because you had a lot of support from your your you know, your staff. I mean, they were so uh, supportive on, you know, getting a meeting together whenever we needed to and, you know, going through and actually talking through everything and making decisions. So it was so helpful. So, um, and I don't want you to think that this is reflective of anything negative on Bartlett because this is pretty typical contractor um, type stuff. So they so. still want to do work with us in the future? <laughs> Yeah. Okay, good. I, I liked them. I thought they did good. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, I, I think so too. I well, this think is, so too. Yeah, this is good. If I could, I also really want to thank Jennifer Land and Jennifer Jennifer Robert Muller's hands are all over this too. And, oh yeah, um, they were great. In, in this so. whole transition period, Jennifer and Robert kept things moving, worked with Debbie, and you see the fruits of it. Yeah, so. and it's hard when that, when you have, you know, three superintendents and it, it makes it really difficult. So, they, yeah, they did great. Especially this, this, especially is, my, this, one right this here, is my right? favorite project, I will tell you. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So, we've talked earlier about kind of what you thought we were going to have left over from proceeds from investments and this. Are we, did we, how did we do? This, A little bit above? Some, the, some of this savings has not been factored into that projection simply because we're waiting to close out the project mm -hmm. and making sure that we still don't run into any unknowns yes. but <laughs> based on this information I anticipate that number of the number for the savings going up awesome. all right I will rephrase that remaining bond funds 
There you go. There you go. I was just going to point out that we yes. do have different buckets of, right. of yes. funds in all of this, yes. and there's certain <laughs> restrictions that can be used. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, this one, and you mentioned another pot of money that was used. Basically, it was taken out of our um, our fund balance uh -huh. last year. From uh, Dr. Uh, Battershell was here, and y'all had that discussion. That money is separate from yeah. this money that we're talking about right here. But with Swim Center, with uh, the facilities assessment that's going on, with some of these other projects that we've talked about, with some of the other things that uh, I've talked about with the board recently, we have to now work with various um, people like Bond Council and see how we can spend what funds in order to make, move some of those things forward. So we'll keep working on that. I just I want to make sure we pointed out that those are two separate yeah, yeah, two different deals, yeah. and one of them is going to be a little bit easier to get to than the other based on yes. yeah. laws and things. Yeah. Remaining bond funds yes. do come with some stipulations. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Well, thank you. Outstanding. Thank you, Debbie. Appreciate, it. Appreciate it. All right. So, do you have any issues or concerns for future agenda or administrative reports? Anything at it? Good. I'm good. I guess Jeff can join us tonight. He had a closing. Okay. He, he notified me earlier okay. today. He told me Monday night he wouldn't be here. All right. All right. So I guess it is uh, 4.50 and we will close it out.